Hi guys, Ben at Carbo Creations. This is the first video I'm doing in a series on slicing software. The point of the videos is to be able to get you guys up and running with any particular piece of software as quickly as possible to get your STL or your 3D file to your printers and get a decent quality print uh, as soon as possible. It's not going to be an overly technical video or in-depth in terms of going across every single setting that can be played with or changed. There's a lot of plan experimentation that can be done with each piece of software. So with that being said, the first piece of software I'm looking at will be Cura 3.2.1. So if you're using Cura and you want to know how to get it working for you, stick around. This video is sponsored by Tall 3D Australia, your one-stop shop for an extensive range of cost-effective, high-quality 3D filaments. Their extensive range includes PLA, ABS, PETG, TPU, wood, metal and silk in both 1.75mm and 3mm diameters. They also sell premium Duraplat coated nozzles for a range of extruders and are supplies of BuildTac, which provides an optimal printing surface that allows for a clean and easy removal of completed builds. When you need consistent performance, finished prints and filaments at a realistic price, Torwell filaments fit the bill. Visit www.torwell3d.com.au today. This video actually took me a bit longer to get out than I wanted. Um, initially when using 3.2.1 and doing some test prints, uh, the little RIC model I was using as my uh, benchmark piece uh, had a lot of issues with the infill crumbling or not printing at all and the outer shells being very weak and it was just it's really falling apart as I was pulling it off the printer. So with that frustration I actually changed out my nozzle and uh, heating, heating pipe uh, thinking that may have been the issue, uh, wasn't the case. Uh, before I went to the length of changing the filament I actually sliced it with a different slicer and got a, a, a really great result. So that was telling me it was something in my slicer settings that was having a, or causing an issue. If you do run across these issues, uh, the great thing about Cura, um, Ultimaker looks after it and they actually make previous versions of the software available for download. So if you are having an issue with the current version, you can jump on their website and download a previous version like I did. Um, the end result was I got some good prints, but uh, the tech guy in me just wouldn't let the 3.2.1 issues go. And I did work through them and got a good print in the end, which I'll show you guys at the end of the video. So there's four main areas with Cura we're going to look at. The first one is setting up your printer for Cura. The second one is setting up your filament for Cura. The third is setting up Cura itself and all the print settings we need to look at and play with. And then there's also setting up your print profile. So you can have a preset for uh, your ultra fine high detailed prints and another one for your not so detailed but you're doing a prototype so you want to get it out there quickly uh, and as dirty as possible just to see if your idea works. So first things first, let's get the printer settings put into Cura. Uh, in my demonstration here I'll be connecting up to the ANET A8, it's the printer I've got at the moment. I have just recently got a CR10 uh, but I'm still yet to put that together although I'm looking forward to it. But the general theory on how to add the printer is very very similar so long as you know all the specs of the printer. So the first time you open up Cura, it'll ask you to add a printer. If yours is uh, Ultimaker, by all means select it from the list, or it might be hiding in the others as well. Uh, for the ANET A8, it's actually not in the list, so we have to create a custom printer. So the first thing we do is click custom printer, put in the name, and then we come to the machine settings. This is where you need to know the settings of your particular printer. In regards to the ANET A8, it's print bed settings. It's a 220mm by 220mm bed with a Z height of 240mm. Rectangular build plate. It is a heated bed. And the important part here for the G-code flavor, out of the box it is wrap uh, wrap. You can however change that to Marlin with uh, firmware updates. Also make sure you've got the uh, number of extruders uh, set to one and the material diameter at 1.75. Out of the box again, the ANET comes with a 0.4 mil nozzle. However, if you've put something smaller on, you'll need to change this as well. 
all the other settings can be left uh, as is. Once you're done here, click finish. The next thing we're going to do is add our filament data to Cura. So when we select it, it will pre-fill some of those print settings straight away. From the preferences menu, select configure Cura and go down to materials. From here, you can create your own uh, custom material. In my case, I'm using a Torwell 3D PLA. So once I've hit create and I've got my custom section up, I can change the name to uh, Galaxy Blue PLA, which is the color of the PLA. Put in the brand being Torwell 3D. The type, the color, uh, how much it costs per roll and how heavy the roll is. This will allow Cura to estimate the cost of each print you do. The other important part when setting up your filament settings is setting up the print settings for that filament. Here you can define the temperatures for the bed, the temperatures for the nozzle, uh, extrusion rates and that sort of thing. Obviously ABS has a higher melting point than PLA and you don't want to use a PLA material in Cura when using ABS because the G-code would then create a file with the incorrect temperature and you're just going to ruin your print. The next step can be a bit daunting. It's adding or disabling settings within Cura itself. There is a huge list of these and not all of them are enabled by default. I'm going to go through and enable a couple which I personally think in my opinion are important for a good first print and uh, that's what I've based my model off. Um, so we'll go through those now and after we've done that we'll set up a couple of print profiles. To get to the settings you need to go up to preferences, Cura settings and then it will be under the settings. Okay, so very quickly hashing through these so we can get you guys printing as fast as possible. Under the quality settings, I tick layer height, initial layer height, and initial layer line width. That layer height is pretty self-explanatory. It's how high each layer of the model is. Just a quick word on layer height. Check your specifications of your printer. If your minimum resolution is say 100 microns, that would equate to 0.1 millimeters. If you go below that, for example, to 0.05 or 0.08, you may get a result, but it may not be that great. The initial layer height has to do with building that foundation for your model. Generally, it's a derivative of your layer height. So for example, in my low quality print profile, my layer height is 0.1 mil. So my initial layer height is 0.2 mil, giving it a bit thicker base and that stronger foundation. The initial layer line width, I generally leave it 100%. Sometimes I have changed it to 200%, which gives me twice the amount of material coming through the nozzle. This just essentially fattens up the lines and can increase bed adhesion. Moving on to the shell settings, there's two boxes I generally tick here, and it's called Optimize Wall Printing Order. What that essentially does when enabled, if you have, for example, three squares on your initial layer, instead of doing one wall for the first, then one wall for the second, then one wall for the third. It will complete all walls. So say if you've got a wall width of uh, 0.8, you've got a nozzle width of 0.4. So that would be two rotations around that element. It will complete the first box, then move to the second, complete it, then move to the third and complete it. This prevents the nozzle from knocking off any other initial layer elements, as well as preventing stringing as well. The second option I enable is the Z seam alignment. This is essentially the vertical zipper of the model where the printing starts and stops on each layer. I select random to start and stop that point randomly around the model. Therefore, I don't get a defined vertical scar on the model. Moving on to the infill settings, I make sure infill density and infill pattern are checked. The infill density is essentially how much material you're going to put into the center of your model. Obviously the more material, the stronger it is, but the longer it's going to take to print. The lower that percentage, the potentially weaker the model may be. I keep mine based at 20%. Now the material settings you don't have to play too much with. As I said earlier with the filament settings, these are preloaded. So your printing temperature and build plate temperature will come from your filament settings. The one thing you may want to tick here is enable retraction. So this controls how far and how fast the extruder pulls back the material before moving on to the next area to print. The reason for this is to prevent some stringing issues. Now the next one is a big one for me guys, is your speed settings. Now the one I tick here is initial layer speed. Now this is really important. If you have a model that has a lot of geometry on the initial layer, think of a rectangle that's got holes all through it. If you're going at a high speed, you may not get a solid wall around each of those bits of geometry 
you'll get stringing everywhere you may only get half a circle or a quarter of a circle for the holes and you'll get a really really bad printing experience by slowing it down you will allow the same amount of material to still come through the extruder but the hot end is not going to be any further along so you're going to complete your layers more thoroughly now the next setting I'm looking at is going to be under support settings. The big one here is uh, support placement. If you have a model that has a lot of overhangs and it's over other parts of the model, you'll need to select everywhere to ensure that each part receives enough support. If you choose only touches the bed, only those bits that overhang the heat bed will get support. The other big one is the support overhang angle. If we take an angle of 50 degrees, everything above 50 degrees is going to get support. So the higher you increase that number, so the steeper the angle of your model, the more support it will get. So if you increase that number from 50 to 80, only everything at 80 degrees and above will get support. The last setting I want to tick is under the build plate adhesion, and it's the brim width. By default, this is at 8 millimeters. I think this is too much for a model. If the model itself has a very large footprint, I'll decrease this down to maybe 2 millimeters because the model itself is going to adhere to the bed fairly well. If the model has a very small footprint, you are going to need to put some material around it to allow it to adhere to the bed. This is where this setting comes in. So instead of using 2mm of material, you might increase that to 4 or 6 or, as the default is, 8mm of material around that small model to allow it to adhere to the bed. So finally we move to the print profiles. What a print profile is, is a pre-saved set of uh, Cura settings that are aimed to deliver a certain result. By default, Cura has about half a dozen profiles set up for everything from an ultra-fine print right through to a coarse print. If you want, you can use the print profiles that are already built into Cura. I do recommend, however, to set up three or four of your own because you can't alter those ones that are already in Cura. For example, your own print profiles may have a different layer height. You may have your Z seam set to uh, random instead of a sp specific edge. Uh, you may prefer brims or rafts over a skirt, uh, other things like that. So it is handy to have your own profiles. To create your own profile, it's quite simply just a matter of setting up all the settings that you'd like for that profile up in the print setup. Once you've done that, you click on the custom button up the top, it'll pop up with a new window, you can name your profile, click OK, and you're done. You now have your own customized profile that you can select from when you want to slice a 3D object. All that's left to do now is open your 3D file or your STL file into Cura, select your printer, your material and your preferred print profile, uh, scale the model to whatever size you want, uh, save it to uh, SD card or to file, and you're right to send it to your printer. This video does address settings in the slicing software which can improve prints. However, I'm not covering how to set up your own specific printer to print optimally, i.e. have you got your bed leveled correctly, uh, all your axes uh, plumb, are they square, is your extruder in working order, is your filament of good quality, things like that. The slicing software is part of the solution, but it's not the entire solution. So take this as part of the entire process of printing. Following the steps and the settings in this video, it'll go a long way to giving you that first good print. I can't guarantee that your first print will be perfect. There may still be some issues that you'll need to work through, but it should take a lot of the legwork out of experimenting and trying to get that decent print out first time. So there you have it guys, that's Cura done and dusted. I'll leave the link below for the STL file that I got off my mini factory for the little Rick. I'll also leave some links for Ultimaker's resources for Cura and some other 3D printing uh, resources they have that'll help you troubleshoot any faults you may find. Let me know in the comments below if uh, you found this helpful or if there's some other issues you're still having you might need some help with or are there some settings that I didn't enable that you have that have uh, let you get a better print. Don't forget to hit the like button if you like what you saw, if it helped you out. Uh, if you haven't already, hit the subscribe button. I've got new content coming out all the time. Uh, you can follow me on all my social media accounts at Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. The next video I'm going to be doing in this series will be on Slicer, so be sure to come back and check it out when it's uh, released. And until next time, thanks for watching. See you later.